Okay, you probably click this video because you want to know how powerful does a laptop need to be to be able to work with game development on the go with decent performance. I'm a game developer myself. I've been working with game development for many years. I, I focus on rigging and animation mostly, but I've started to move on to C++ game development and are probably going to work full time with C++. Uh, I recently decided that I had to move country back home and I can't bring my workstation with me. Uh, so I had to sell it and I needed a laptop and I thought, okay, wh why won't I look into the possibility of just switching permanently to a laptop solution? Laptops are quite powerful these days, but I don't know how much power I need. So. I decided to buy this Asus ROG laptop, the specific one you see on the screen. And these are the specs, the, my old workstation and this new laptop. I'm not sponsored or anything by Asus. This just happened to be one of the dedicated gaming laptops that was in the store here locally in Bahrain, where I currently live in. Um, so let's look briefly. I had an original workstation, i7, 3.5 GHz from two years ago, 16 GB of RAM, SSD plus HDD hard drives, and I bought a new GeForce 980 Ti. And this card is like at the top 10 percentile of performance after like the Titan and the new 1080 lineup from Nvidia. And maybe perhaps SLI will of course be faster than this single card but this workstation could play all the latest games including doom at full quality at high performance no lag this workstation was a monster to me so i'm going from this workstation to a laptop so you might think that oh that's quite a downgrade i won't be able to work so let's look at the specs on this laptop i7 2.6 gigahertz 16 gb of ram a 960 mobile card and this laptop didn't have an ssd so i replaced it on the spot in the store i told him like i must have an ssd for those of you who don't know ssds are superior when it comes to loading many small files at once instead of um pure big file reading uh, and this is important for startup times when you load games when you load projects when you're doing compiling with c plus plus or whatever you're going to save so many hours of pure waiting time by investing in an ssd don't be stupid and think it's expensive buy it you will save hours of development time from getting rid of uh, waiting times so just briefly, like I said, I've been working with game development for many years and um, I worked with Unreal Engine before, Mortal Online, Deadline and Guardians of Valor Unreal Engine games I worked on. I have a Unity game and an internal engine game. So I've worked with many different technologies and uh, with these projects it was mostly character rigging and animation and also I started doing C++ on Guardians of Valor. So I just want to make it clear I've done game development for quite some time and specifically with the uh, Unreal Engine. So before we move along, I want to make something perfectly clear. Playing games and making games are completely different areas. Like they, they are not related in any way except that the developed game is something someone else will play. What I'm trying to say is don't use games like something you play as a performance benchmark for how good it will be to develop the game on the go because it's completely different topics as a reference a, a friend of mine ben burkhart also known as evil mr frank of, on the unreal engine forums he's a really talented uh, level designer i work with him on guardians of valor he's currently working on in Florida on that well it, it's this game with dinosaurs and first-person shooters it's a very popular game sorry Ben I don't remember the name in the top of my head right now 
but anyway, he made a benchmark called a Tarnity Benchmark. It's a free download and it's based on Unreal Engine 4. Let's boot this up. And while this is loading, let me just note I'm currently recording full HD on the graphics card. So it's already wasting maybe a few percent performance on encoding video right now. So the demo is loaded and I'm doing a fly through. I think the texture is about loaded by now. And you see I start around 20 FPS. This demo runs between 15 to 20 FPS on this laptop in 1080. And by comparison, my other machine was between 60 to 80 FPS, and that's like a top of the line graphics card. You might think, oh, below 20 FPS, I won't be able to work with this. This is horrible performance. No. Like I tried to say, playing a game like high end rendering like this is not the same as developing a game. Okay. So to prove the point, we'll close this. And we'll open a project that Epic Games released for free in the Epic Games launcher, uh, which is called Particle Effects. It's a demo that you can download and open in the editor, just for seeing how particle effects are created. And it's a decently looking demo scene. And I think it's a good performance benchmark for how it performs in editor. So now Unreal Engine 4 is loaded. And you can see I have around 40 FPS in the editor while this is real time. And you see, it's uh, performance is okay. I'm currently recording at 30 FPS, so you won't notice <laughs> unless it drops below 30 in performance. So let's do a play. Almost 60 FPS, but I'll go full screen and you'll see how it performs. We, we can see the FPS, but I can say that it's around 45 FPS right now. And now it dropped to maybe around 30 FPS. You see, the performance is quite good for like a high quality demo from Epic themselves. I know they have more demanding demos like the open world, but those are extreme demos. I wouldn't even try to open the open world demo on a laptop takes hours just to load on a dedicated machine. So now you have a sense of the performance. Like you could see, high-end performance in Unreal Engine 4 is more than enough on this laptop. But uh, I want to show the C++ guys how, how it will perform with code and compiling. So I'll start a new blank project. I'll do the third person example, no starter content, and I'll just do a create project. What it does when we create it now is it will generate the project files and it will start compiling the C++ code so we get the DLLs for starting the project for the first time. So this is a clean build in Visual Studio in the background. This is also at the same time as it's going to try to load Visual Studio in the background and the project. Okay, so the project is loaded, Visual Studio is in the background, it's initializing projects, and while I'm back in the editor, it's actually going to cache parsing the files in solution. That in itself is a CPU intensive operation and hard drive. Oh, this is also proof of why you need an SSD. You see there's a lot of small files being loaded. If I had this on a normal hard drive, this would be like a snail space. Get the SSD, don't be stupid. So now, you see the performance is good. I'm playing at like maximum performance. Um, and this one doesn't have any detailed blueprints, but from what I've seen, I've never had a slowdown working with blueprints. Um, I can feel a slight, slight lag if I really try to push it and when I've opened other blueprints it's only if I'm going with insane like this and dragging it around that I can feel it. Otherwise everything is butter smooth. Um, let's open a source file and uh, like this one and we'll just do a small change here. I'll just copy a row. So I just changed the code which means I can do a hot reload. 
and it has to recompile and you'll see that it will just take a couple of more seconds and the hot reload should be done so you see it, it's done and this is while it's parsing files in the solution it's parsing and hot reloading at the same time and the performance is still smooth and uh, I've noticed that if you compile with debugging on you you'll probably drop from uh, uh, if, if the frame rate right now would be 40, you'd probably drop down to 25-30 FPS with heavy debugging, blueprint nodes being updated and everything. So you'll still be close to 30 FPS in performance unless you have a super uh, high AAA graphics rendering going on. And in that scenario, I would in any case just go and pull down like the res screen resolution and the quality to be able to work on the laptop. We're, we're working on a laptop after all, and the performance is this good. So, after seeing all of this, I hope you, you, you get the good sense that laptops these days are starting to become so powerful that you can essentially do professional game development on the go with high performance. I don't think there's any point in showing anything more than this. So I hope you enjoyed seeing this video and that you can now make a better purchase decision. Uh, just a closing note, this was the 960M card. I think 950M might be the absolute minimum I recommend. I don't think you need to go 970M unless you do some seriously graphical intensive stuff. So these specs are more than enough, any computer brand. So thank you, for, thank you again for watching, take care.